first let's set up pygame import pygame call its initialize function grab the screen object from pygame.display.setMode and we're going to pass in the width of the screen which we're going to set to 500 and the height which is also 500 so width and height so now we have screen which is an object we can use to draw stuff to now setting up the main loop of the program so running equals true while running we're going to do the following grab all the events in pygame.event.get if the event type is pygame's quit event which is triggered when the user clicks the x button running will be false and that will break out of the loop otherwise we're just going to fill screen with white that's the corresponding white uh, color for its corresponding RGB value for white. And then update the display play flip. So once you're out of the while loop, you're going to exit out of Pygame. So we run that, we should get a window which is 500 by 500, and it's white, and if we X out of it, the program will stop. So now, to build the fractal tree, we first, all we need to do is just draw a branch. The branch is defined as a line of some length, followed by two other branches attached at the end. And these branches attached at the end have length r, which is a fraction of the parent's length and is at an angle theta relative to the parent's direction. And the same thing occurs for the children branches until you get to the tips where you get to a terminal length and the cycle stops. So we can implement this with a recursive function. So we can define a function called line that gets passed in screen, x and y, uh, length and angle theta. So find that function. So we can use iGames draw line function, which draws to a screen with a certain color. We can make it black. Um, we pass in tuple of the initial point and of the endpoints, x2, y2. And we can make x2, y2 here. So x2 will be defined as x minus length times theta, oops, cosine of theta. And y2 will be y minus length times math sine of theta. So of course we're going to have to import math. So what this does is it takes theta and it grabs the x and y component with these trig functions, respectively. And it takes these components and multiplies them with, or it takes the ratios, multiplies it with the length to get the component of the length in the x and y direction. So, for example, if we just call line at um, can make the x value with divided by 2 so it'll be 
uh, this is the width, it'll be right there. And then the height will be, or the y value will just be the height, which will be at the bottom of the screen since the, the y axis is inverted. Um, the length we can pass in an arbitrary value, say 150. And theta, we can start with pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. Um, and that's what it looks like here. It's 90 degrees relative to the horizontal. So if we run this, we should get a line. Oh, this needs to come after because that's filling it with white. Okay. There we get a line starting at uh, x equals 250, y equals 500, all the way to there, which is trig function evaluated times length. Uh, and then that subtracted from that. And we can make this function recursive by calling it again, but using x2 and y2 length times, you can say, two-thirds, and a theta you can make, use the same angle, but add oops, add pi over six, and do the same thing. But instead of adding, we subtract this angle, pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. So that will result in two branches that are at uh, an angle of each other. So this will keep calling itself since line is calling line. So we can set base condition for this recursive function if the length is less than or equal to one we won't do anything else we'll just return so while it's greater than well length is greater than one it will calculate x2 and y2 using the angle the length of a branch and its initial point It'll draw the line, and then it will call line twice to make two branches attached to the end. So if we run this, we get a beautiful fractal tree. Now we can modify these values by setting them to variables r equals 0 0.67, two thirds. And we can make delta theta to pi over six. So instead of that, it will be r. And this will be delta theta. If we run that, we'll get the same result, except now we have two variables we can vary, and we can use Pygame's mouse coordinates, pygame.mouse.get position, so this gets the x and y position. Now we can use x and y to vary, to use, uh, to vary r and delta theta with respect to. So update r and delta theta. We can divide, we can vary delta theta with respect to x. If we divide x by 250. So x is between 0 and 500, since that's the <coughs> width of our screen. So this value will be between 0 and 2. 
we multiply that by pi, delta theta will be between 0 and 2 pi. Same idea with r. This term will be between 0 and 1. If we multiply by 0 0.7, r will be between 0 and 0.7. And then we can also do some fun things with color. So we can set the green value in RGB, the RGB tuple that's passed in in the draw line function. And subtract 255 from length. So as length approaches 1, green will approach 254 or whatever. So it will look like there are leaves on the end of the trees. Let's run this function. Now we have a beautiful fractal tree that grows as you move your mouse around and moves as you move your cursor left and right. And it looks like there are leaves 